actually, I and my husband, uh, one day question. I said, uh, let's go to Germany. It's Europe, it's close. Uh, he says, no, no, I don't want to speak German. Let's go to Portugal. But then it was Salazar's regime. Still. And my aunt, my mother's sister, she didn't have children and she had plenty of okay. assets in Africa, in Mozambique. She was inviting us. She says, you come, we'll get, I'll get you a job for both. This house will be for you all and whatever. whatever. But I said, no, no, no. I'm against that war because it is not a just war. The nat natives there, they you know, have a right to their land. So I don't agree. That's why we didn't go. And the only alternative we had was to Brazil. So with me uh, this evening is Dr. Alice uh, Govia. Uh, very long history, very long history, some of it a bit odd and unusual. Uh, I won't go into that now, but uh, my mom's colleague in, in Azil Hospital, in Azil Hospital in the 60s, when we came back from Brazil and before she migrated to Brazil. And she has many memories from those days, doctor, right? Thanks, your, your your father was the founder of uh, Remans. Yes, he bought the house, that was just a house. And later on, it was his dream having a maternity house and having all his children <laughs> become doctors. This was really lack of imagination. So anyway, that was that's How many way. children became doctors? Three out All of three. four. I see, I see. <laughs> so, so my brother, eldest brother had already finished and married, married Kunya Gomez's uh, sister and gone to Africa. I was still studying when, of course, this took place. And 1961. 61. And then we had, I had you know, the two, uh, this brother and sister, they were just starting, finish, one was finishing uh, Lyceum and the other the one was going to the Lyceum. So my father thought, okay, since it's Portuguese, we shift to Portugal. They went there, but uh, I think our decision of going to Brazil was wiser because people from of course, the war started in, in uh, Africa and people started coming back to Portugal, mainland. And uh, there were lack of jobs and so on and housing also. The economy not, was not doing well also. In, no, in. The economy, actually the economy was very poor and Salazar didn't mind because he had plenty of gold here, reserve. He thought he was an economist, but strict, yeah. not corrupt, strict, yeah. very strict. Um, so my, my father took the children and they settled in Portugal. I was finishing. I was, no, I was in the mid, mid uh, of the course. And later on, we got married and we didn't know where to go. So Brazil. Brazil. Of Everyone course. ended up in Brazil or only all? No, no, only two of us. Only two of you. Uh, you and Dr. Dr. Govia. Carlos was there, but he was in Curitiba because Brazil is big, so yeah. the states are far. Anyway, we landed in Sao Paulo itself. And in Sao Paulo itself, of course, uh, uh, they accepted uh, qualifications. Qualifications. And my husband, we got the card to practice, and I went for further studies. That was pathology. And my husband, of course, he preferred the clinical side always. Dr. Gobia. Yes. What Gobia? Philip Gobia. Philip Gobia. So he went to, on his own to the clinical side. And that was a nice time because though it was a military regime. In Brazil also. In Brazil. We didn't feel it. Okay. There was security. There was plenty. He could go out without restrictions and so on. But, of course, then they wanted, the militaries wanted to get out of uh, the government yeah. and hand it to uh, civilians. civilians. But the civilians, of course, were very old, old people, 
not a new generation. And they were the only experienced one because they were in parliament and so on. So there was a transition period where things started becoming a little bit shaky. In the 80s? Uh, a little before the 80s. Okay. Yeah, a little before the 80s. We didn't have terrorism as such. But anybody that was not for the government was against the government. Okay. So that's how they did it. And present President Lula, yeah. he was just a mechanic working for some multinational car industry. So it was okay for those who had a job and life was nice. But still, it was backwards concerning um, if you compare it to Germany, UK, mm. uh, Canada, and uh, the US. So, in most prominent universities, the best who could afford, they used to go and for further studies and then come, and of course, they used to get a good job. That was how it was. But doctor, your, your memories of Goa in the 60s? Uh, in 60s, Goa actually was a mixture of feelings in the sense that we were neither Portuguese nor neither Indian. We wanted to be something and we could not get a chance. So uh, it was a mixed thing, you know. And we could not target anything also saying, no, I'll get there. I'll do it. So much uncertainty, no? Uncertainty. Uncertainty. So, because of that, that was also one of the reasons why we made a move. So, you grew up in, in the 50s, you were in school? Which in, school? Uh, in the 50s, I, uh, the school for, was uh, Immaculate Conception. Panjim. Panjim. Right to the Lyceum. English education. I did the English education, but my father wouldn't send me abroad. So <laughs> he said, You do Lyceum. I finished with Lyceum and then went to the medical school. Actually, I wanted a grant to go abroad yeah. and do nursing, but he says, No, nothing doing. My daughter will never become a nurse. What is it? There's so many nurses. Anyway, uh, that was how I landed in the medical school. And after that, I finished. And after that, of course, I thought that post-graduation. As in Sao Paulo University, competition is really yes. very fierce. So we had to keep ourselves updated always. I see. Yes. I suppose you have interviewed also another professor of arts. He stays in Alphaville. And he's studying because he had a stroke. Who's this? Uh, I don't know his name don't know at the moment. But he had a stroke. And he started relearning. To uh -huh, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know who that yeah, is. Yeah. Yes. So that, that is very important for today because now... Professor we, Mario. Yes. Lynn Mario. Professor. Lynn Mario. Lynn Mario. Oh, Mario. Because it is very important, especially for those... Neuroscientists, because of the language, how you acquire after the stroke, how the brain works, and so oh. on. So I like that part of the interview we had with Professor Mario. And of course, uh, Professor Carlos. All Goans in Brazil, but probably <laughs> scattered all over the place because it's a huge country in yes. that sense, three times the size of India. It is, it is. Tell us about your memories of Mapsa. That's most fascinating Mapsa, for me. Mapsa was... Uh, a small town, a small town today, I say. Yeah. For our days, it was a big town because going from the church to the police station, oh gosh, we had walked so much. But today, in three, yeah, on a cycle. In but everyone knew everyone else at that time. Everyone knew everyone else, and you have to be very careful after if you went out of the pattern of the society. Yeah. And they told your parents, and you had it. But. Um, we didn't have most of the resources, so any extra things we needed, we had to either go to Panjim or get from abroad. I see. Books and everything. I so, see. Yeah. Uh, my school, yes, my school is there. 
in front of the my primary school in front of the post office okay yes it has been refurbished right 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 horrible way yeah. that was your primary school yes primary school. what was it called school no. of primary school okay. okay okay so that was the primary school only two years then i went to the convent and finished there so uh, in the mornings of course walking from my house to the primary school it seemed no, like never ending never ending so i should not have skip i should skip breakfast <laughs> to to reach to school i see and one day my father got so annoyed that he sent the we had the ayas that yeah. used to look after yeah. us with a tray with coffee <laughs> to the school to the was, school yeah that was such a shameful event <laughs> yeah. we used to blush with anything yeah, yeah, the, yeah out yeah. of the pattern so after that my father said no now you go as a boarder to the immaculate conception school okay school. and there i was still last year i started my high secondary and last year after last year i went to medical school how was the medical school medical school was a small thing we didn't have more than 30 yes 30 pupils per, in a class per year per year per year so uh, and we didn't have too many staff because most of the staff was from go itself uh, maybe one or two uh, from abroad in the lyceum too we most of the staff were goans um, and most of them doctors uh, but uh, we had some teachers who came from portugal when la- years later that was in the in the 80s i went to portugal uh, from brazil some holiday and we met old col- colleagues who were already holding good posts uh, ambassadors and so on. and they were just to say you all were lucky you all had one lyceum for girls and boys we here had schools for girls and schools I for see. boys and so nothing no. so were girl students accepted in the medical school in goa without with equality relative equality no, no problem no problem no discrimination we had uh, one muslim colleague mostly hindus yeah. catholics and ladies also hindus ladies so, hindu ladies. ladies yes so we were many ladies we were what seven i see yeah but they did treat you all with respect as equals as capable yes equal i equal. see equal. in goa the equation is a bit different now it's not like they I, they were uh, in the medical school they were i see yes so that was what happened in medical school but was it tough to get in as a lady no that the there was no discrimination between if you got good marks gents. that's it you had to have at least a, there was a tab i think it was 14 or 15 uh out of out of 20 20 yeah and you got automatically the same to the lyceum to go to the lyceum you had to have at least 40 at least 40 okay. yes you got it so the there was a sort of scrutiny to keep uh, i don't say it was the best it was the best for those times yeah because today everything has changed and uh, after the medical school we waited but they never gave us md's or whatever or didn't even give a chance to apply for md's so there was some issue of recognitions and things yes, like that yes and they were taking too long i see so this is form 61 till no form 60 6 66 to 69 so actually you know that's the time when you should start yeah and we were finding it was stagnant nothing was happening yes yes we'll do it so they never said no but they never did it i see for it so actually going into clinical practice was not my aim i did it did some clinical practice in moira but uh going out Yeah. It was the best option. I see. And of course, like adventurers, we had never seen Brazil. We had never been outside India. The yeah. The, long, the furthest we had gone is Delhi and Bangalore. That's all. 
So we went to, uh, to, to Sao Paulo and then we started. And we got into, because the Brazilian society then was very open. Very open. And, and, most and you were young. We were young and most Brazilians, minus the natives of India, yeah. uh, are all migrants. Yeah. yeah. So we still mix up with the Japanese, Italians, uh, whatever. Uh, they made good friends over there. And uh, language was the same, language was the same. Almost same. Almost same. I don't say, but. They could was, make out it. Yes, they could make out, and of course, uh, uh, in writing also, it was a little bit different, but they, you could read it. I see. Now, uh, after 80, there was unemployment. And because of unemployment, the urban violence, yes. And that was terrifying because yeah. my husband used to come late sometimes and so on. But the fact that made us decide to leave Brazil was not because we don't like Brazil, we love Brazil. Yeah. But my husband was in the bank, a small uh, branch inside the hospital. I see. Mm -hmm. He and a colleague talking to the manager. Yeah. When suddenly a well dressed gentleman comes, points a gun to his head. To your husband's head? Head. And he tells the manager, he says, Pass on uh, all the money you have in the safe. Oh, gosh. Because you have two minutes. Okay. My husband was saying, he says, I don't know, those two minutes look like uh, eternity. He was a hostage for the money? He, hostage for, yeah, and his colleague also. In a small cabin. But he was not working in the bank, he was just visiting. He had gone to the bank to decide to speak to the manager, yeah. that was all. But he used to work in that hospital. And uh, of course, the, both of them really came out almost, they couldn't talk. Uh, My people God. Were, and those two gentlemen left the bank. With the money? With the money, they passed the security and so on and went off. After that, the security ran, but nobody could find them because they were well dressed. And in that uh, district of uh, Avenida Paulista, really, banks, all banks. So you, you never see. know who's a robber, who's... Who. Oh, God. That was how, what happened. That, so it must have been very traumatic in that uh, sense. Uh, uh, that was a nightmare. With me. Uh, it was in the faculty campus. Uh, my colleague, I was not going, but my colleague was taking a poster to the uh, Congress. So I was helping her put the thing in the car. Taking what? Sorry? A poster. 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 Scientific poster. Okay. So uh, my colleague was uh, loading that. When uh, two fellows, one must have been 14, and the other one 12 or something. They started running and whistling and whatever. And suddenly one of them approached. I said, don't touch. Immediately I heard something like a firecracker, those crackers, small crackers. And my bottom burning terribly. Really? He had shot. Shot? Shot. But it didn't go through the muscle, okay. fortunately. But uh, grazed, grazed. Yes, grazed terribly and burning and so on. Of course, so you become you know very insecure whether it's during the day and the, you need broad daylight. Sec yes, secure uh, this uh, secluded places or whatever. It was right in the in the compound. So I said this cannot go on because we are we go crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we cannot go with a bodyguard also. Right. So we have to think about ourselves. Okay. I got a, uh, a six month sabbatical to Germany. I went to Germany. Which part? Uh, Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. Yes. To study uh, environmental pathology. I see. Yes. It was it was new to Sao Paulo there because of Kubatown. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So. Um, I found that really you could walk it. You come home alone from the opera in the night and yeah. so on. And see. nobody would really, nobody would say anything to you. And we hardly saw any police. So 
after six months, that did make me decide. I see. I came back and I told the head of the department, I said, uh, these things have happened. And he says, you know, it's not only you. I was going to the opera. One fellow put his hand in in my back pocket. Hand? Remove, remove my wallet. I see. Mm-hmm. I caught his, his hand, he says, but he wouldn't remove it. So he tore my pants. Oh, gosh. My goodness. <laughs> he tore my pants. Of course, there was half an hour and he, I stayed close by. They, he was staying close by. Okay, he went, he went back. He changed and came. So it was like that, you know, during the day itself. Yeah. So that made us really decide that we couldn't. What are your memories of Goa before leaving? Uh, the, tr- the, the change was quite uh, difficult, no? For your generation in For particular. For my generation, uh, I don't say we, we were sort of, we only knew the Portuguese regime. And yeah. we wanted to know what would happen if India took over and all the promises and things they said would really happen. But no, it, it was sort of a stagnant regime. They would promise, but never carry out. So... My colleagues were quite happy. They became uh, senior medical officers and so on. All over the world? No, here. Here, here. here. And they even uh, health officers, medical officers, whatever. And they retired. They are quite happy and so on. But for us, uh, that was not enough. And in spite of Philip being the eldest son, very packed. I see. Uh, we went. Yeah. I see. Uh, we have assets here, we mean the yeah. Koreas have assets here, but in spite of that, we wanted a profession Yeah. and to be on our own without the assets and right. so on. So we, we would never get that chance. And uh, Korea, the Remanso story? The Remanso story is that uh, on the, soon after liberation, you call it whatever you want, uh, I had two uh, siblings who were young, and my father said there will will not be the same type of Portuguese schools. So the best is to go to Portugal. I had been to Portugal quite often, my father and my stepmother. And they knew some people over there. so. So they could get a transfer if, they were in the fifth year, or had finished, would go to the sixth year. And so they went and finished there. I see. Now, Remanso, what to do with the Remanso? You cannot close it until yeah. they finish and come. So they sold it to the... There weren't these groups, neither this... Uh, ju- I don't say junior doctors, but ju- good specialists who come from... state, Like many hospitals you see now. Uh, they weren't. So they sold it to the nuns. And then uh, they had, they didn't. First, they had Dr. Fernand Lobo from Dumpeng, who used to go as a regular uh, physician every morning. And one another visiting doctor. Now, gradually, it's a multi speciality. Yeah. And of course, they've increased a lot, the sisters. Remasu today must be around. 55 years. Your your father ran it from when to when? Uh, he bought it in 44. Uh, it was complete. It was just a house. I see. Yeah. He beautiful bought, structure. Beautiful structure. Even till today. Uh, no, today I find it's uh, okay. too crowded. But anyway, they need the space. They must get the money. So, uh, I was telling you. Yes. It's 44. A, a 44? Uh, 44, yes. Uh, after that, he renovated the whole thing. And uh, until they had another wing at the back and there was space. So it was okay. Uh, my father used to work. Till 60? 63. Three. Three. Uh, my father was okay in the sense that he used to work alone. But after 61, he had to be careful. Once on a call in the night to, I don't know whether it's Sankali or Valpoi, okay. he was stopped by one of 
those groups. I see. The Satyagraha is supposed okay. to go yeah. And uh, they stripped his chain. I see. And, uh, Before 61 or after? Before? Before 61, okay. yes. It's very close to 61. I see. Yeah. So he came. Of course, that that time the story was not told to us in detail. Because you were children, yeah. Yes, and he said, I was alone. Normally, he used to take the driver, but he didn't want to be going the driver. So he says, if that kill me, I don't know who would support you. My goodness. Yes, it was that one. And uh, that also, you know, actually makes you yeah. turn the page and take another decision. I think your generation went through a very tough period and most people don't see it that way but it's a fact it is it no? is because of the trauma even my mom who was a nurse with you yes that full generation my dad you know they didn't know whether they were coming or going because they studied in british schools and then they were in independent india and coming back to goa and... absolutely absolutely there wasn't a smooth tr- transition yeah, yeah. yeah it was very so we were yeah. for some time goa was like a Second class, whatever. Yeah, yeah, state, or colony almost. Yeah, a colony. So I remember people living in rows in that sense in the sixties. No, they so. went. People left in rows, thinking they would get good jobs abroad. Okay. But they stayed there. First thing you must see is the weather. We have four seasons, and cold is really cold, <laughs> so they couldn't stand it. And gradually, they started coming back. And of course, some are doing very well today. Yeah. No, I don't say it. Today, after studying the whole panorama, you can choose and calculate and really you have support. You have support. You can plan what you want to do. Yeah. If you want to have your clinic, you see which specialities you need and you contact them. Uh, there wasn't this uh, facility then. Mm. So, really, then and now, there has been a change. Has been a change for better, for worse. Whatever, we don't know, but... No, each one... Yeah, we'll say. Yeah. We'll say. But uh, I must say that uh, colleges have come up. There has mm. been improvement. Uh, many have had a, a chance to study further. Yeah. Because otherwise, after the fourth standard, they used, go, they used to go either to the shops of their fathers or grandfathers, whatever. And very few used to proceed with the studies. Fascinating, fascinating. Yes. Doctor, so nice to hear your memories. And I think it's important to preserve. Don't put this on the... <laughs>